go back. How are we doing for time, uh, Vel? Wow. Good, so we're keeping good time. So let's move on to the next session here. So basically, um, we're now moving into sort of the first session of proposals for action and how the OERU meetings typically work. We have breakout groups focusing on different themes, right? And it's a kind of a vote with your feet sort of thing. You, you join the group that you have a particular interest in, and the group is then tasked to develop proposals for action for the OERU to take forward based on you know, what the focus of the group is. Now, it's terribly hard for somebody like myself that has basically got an interest in all those things. So, um, you know, choose the one that you, you feel you can contribute the most to. These Etherpad documents do remain open. So you will be able to add your thoughts and contributions to other groups you wanted to be in. Um, but what we try and do is uh, achieve a working group for each of these themes. And a working group is a minimum of two people. Uh, two people constitute a valid working group. Uh, and so what we'll do is I'll do a brief introduction of the, the four group areas we're wanting to have a look at. Let me just try and do a bit of a screen. So one of the working groups is to focus on the whole digital marketing uh, initiative. So a little bit of background. Um, we started to realize how important marketing is. One of the uh, grants we qualify for at the OERU being a nonprofit is the Google Ads grant scheme. So Google gives nonprofits like ourselves a grant of 10,000 US per month we can use for pay-per-click advertising. Our fundamental challenge has been we are not experts in pay-per-click advertising. We've tried our level best and it's complicated. Um, and so the recommendation was get, get $10,000 or $15,000 to appoint an agency. And so I asked a couple of institutions, do you have $15,000 lying around so we can appoint an agency to get $150,000 New Zealand in return, roughly in budget. We weren't, we weren't successful there, but I'm very pleased to report and just recently the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation have given us a capacity development grant of 25,000 US to appoint an agency to take this digital marketing uh, process forward. So that is now going to happen. Part of this working group, um, we can see the digital marketing project here. There's the actual proposal, what we're going to be working on. Uh, there are basically four areas, you know, to the establish, manage, and optimize a Google ad campaign. We are going to spend quite a bit of uh, energy on improving our search engine optimization with professional help. Uh, we want to trial alternative pay-per-click uh, avenues. I mean, how effective is Facebook? How effective is LinkedIn? Get some benchmarking there to see how it compares with Google AdWords. Um, we also have got the question is, do, I mean, do we need different marketing strategies, for example, in sub-Saharan African countries? Um, are the models that we are using here, I mean, obviously we want to do that in many, many more countries, but you've got to start somewhere. So we're going to focus on Kenya and run pilots within Kenya to learn from this process in terms of what marketing is effective in these environments. How do we get the message of the OERU to the learners who need it most. Um, so that will be built in there. Uh, one of the other strategies we're going to try is this notion of corporate citizenship, where corporates start sponsoring OERU courses uh, in return for uh, brand recognition or whatever in relation to the course as a mechanism to generate revenue for us to continue paying professional agencies to help us with this work. 
So because when the, Google, when the Hewlett grant runs out, we've got to figure out, well, how do we sustain it? So this is just some area we want to experiment with. We're also setting up a reference group that will be working closely with the ad agencies. So the marketing group, which is part of the OERU working group structures, will be part of the reference group advising uh, the implementation of this project. For institutions that are looking to learn more about this, uh, this pay-per-click marketing in this environment, come and join us. It's going to be a learning curve for us all. And we're happy to share because I think that is of potential value as being a partner in this network is a bunch of learning that can take place there. So that's around the digital marketing. There's been a lot of conversation around improving partner engagement, right? That came through in the uh, critical friend review. Dave, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this, but we are hoping to have a breakout group that will have more of a technology focus. What are the technology priorities for us moving forward? Um, and what I might just do is ask Adrian just to give us a brief rundown of what we're planning to do with equality. Okay, thank you, Wayne. So over the last um, about oh, eight months or thereabouts, we've had a working group around the course quality initiative. What we're trying to do is take a look at the existing toolkits that exist. We've got four to focus on today, and each one of those is from an institution essentially pointing out what are the good practice indicators that are good online learning design and development is occurring. The OERU to date has got some documentation around things like technical standards and around style guides and the like, but at this point, we don't have anything around how we would actually review a course and how we would provide evidence that uh, there were elements of good practice occurring within those courses. The aim of this group is to construct a document which will have both the uh, criteria, which is the, the broad statements around what does a good quality course have in it, and then the criteria, which, uh, sorry, the indicators, which would then state, well, if you are looking for evidence that this exists, this is what you are looking for. Now, the two things that this will be used for is one, to conduct a review of existing OERU courses and to spark a discussion around how we might um, be able to enhance those courses, uh, but at the same time, be able to pick out examples of good practice so that when an institution is joining the OERU or starting to design a course, they would be able to say, well, if you want to see a really good student orientation, go into this course here. Okay, so it's a way of also celebrating the good practice. The second aspect of it is if you're designing a brand new course, this provides you with essentially a series of guide posts which say, here's the sorts of things that we're looking for if you're going to design a good online course. We're trying to synthesize those four documents this afternoon um, and then progress from there into something that we can take to the board for endorsement. Right, thank you. So we have four proposed breakout groups. So this part of the process is to find out if we have viable working groups. So I just asked for uh, a show of hands of people who'd be interested in joining the, uh, the uh, particular group. So have a think about the group that you're most interested in contributing to. And then I'll ask who wants to join that group. Yes, Simone. Correct. So the thing, this is something we trialed for the first time at the previous partners meeting. We've got one group that will be dedicated to that topic for the three breakout sessions over the course of the meeting. So the quality group is a group that will have three breakouts focusing on the work that they need to do because it's a quite, you know, it's more than you can do in a session. But by the same token, that doesn't mean that if you do join this group in this session, that you have to be there for every single time that group meets. I just hope that the core partners will continue with, with, with that group. If, does that answer the question? Okay. Does it make sense, Christine? Okay, good. Right, so just a quick show of hands. Who is interested in helping out with uh, this digital marketing 
uh, initiative. What and it's not actually doing the marketing. It's about planning. Uh, we, if we look at the, I'll just give you a sense of the kinds of things that uh, we'll be looking at there. So, you know, it's more organized, you know, what are the barriers to our marketing professionals and our partners engaging in this process? What are the opportunities for the marketing professionals to be part of this process? Do you have any suggestions to improve participation in, you know, the marketing communications and the suggestions for this planning process? Because this we will feed back into the reference group to take further, if that makes sense, in consultation with our agency, because we do, we have appointed a prof professional agency to help us out with this uh, aspect. So the question is, is there anybody who's interested in joining this mark digital marketing group? We have one, we have two, we have three. So that's a viable working group and I might actually just sit in a while in that group because I've got to make sure we spend our $25,000 well. Yeah. Okay, so that's a viable group. Um, Group two, the uh, institutional engagement piece. Is anyone that's interested in working with that, how to improve? Yes, yeah, so that's a viable working group. Yeah, great. Uh, anybody with uh, interest in the technology piece? Dave? Ryan? Rajiv? Yeah, all right, so this is a viable group. So maybe if Rajiv and Dave, you have that conversation. Because Ryan, I need I need you at the digital marketing. You can't leave that. <laughs> you the you 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 the facilitator, the rapporteur. You're trying to get out of this piece. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and the quality guidelines project. Yeah, so we've got yeah, we've got a good group there with the quality guidelines. Okay, so that's, so we have viable groups for each of those four breakouts. So the process, you know, this is a rough proposal for action. It's the first draft of the plan. We will refine it as we go along, but this is a one of, you know, it's a good opportunity for us to be together and get those initial draft plans on the table. Make sense? So just in terms of dividing groups up, shall we have group one and two here, and then group three and group four in the breakout rooms? Is that okay? So group one is digital marketing here. Group two is partner engagement here. Group three, 2064, establishing technology priorities and 2065, the quality guidelines group. And then we reconvene at 3.30. We reconvene at 3.30. All right, welcome back everybody. We, we are now going to take feedback of the improving OERU operations session and Simon is going to uh, help us through this. Well, we're already a little bit over time, which is mostly down to uh, my group. Uh, we'll start without the other guys because they're not quite back yet. Um, so let's um, be different and... Where are you going, Wayne? Uh, you tell me where you want to go. Okay. Uh, well, let's start for the, with the uh, digital technologies group. <laughs> digital, uh, sorry, digital. Um, uh, I saw the word digital, and then it just disappeared from my site, which was my problem. Um, to start with your group, Dave. Yep. Technology. <laughs> If you're able to find it. Okay, so um, our massive group of Rajiv and me, um, we uh, came up with a few things. Um, I won't talk about the current strengths because I think hopefully we've 
you've already had those hammered in. <laughs> but um, the current weaknesses were um, probably a bit revealing because um, I have an inside view of these things. But basically, um, we wanted to work out uh, the weaknesses that we have, I think, are related to our ability to actually measure our system requirements and be able to look at how different technologies that we're using actually have an impact on our overall infrastructure and, and being able to anticipate and mitigate problems before they arise rather than after they arise. And so we want to set up more uh, mechanisms for measuring things internally. That's, that's certainly one of my personal ambitions. Um, we also were looking at uh, tools to aid people who are actually running OERU courses. So for the educators or the course uh, managers and the education designers, um, the idea that there be like a dashboard that allowed people to see how people are actually interacting with the course. So for example, what pages do they spend all of their time focusing on? What pages do they depart immediately before or after? That sort of thing. So you can start to identify where there might be ways to improve the course materials. Um, Another thing would be uh, looking at how learners go through a set of micro courses, which may or may not be done in a certain order. And for example, work out if there are particular micro courses that if the learner starts with that one, it tends to lead them to completing all the courses versus other ones where if they start on the wrong course, they may drop out after that one and not do any further ones. So give us some insight into how people interact with the sequences. And then also, I'm very keen to, to actually um, take the hypothetical scalability of our systems and actually test it so we can verify that some of our systems will scale. There are ways to do that. <clears throat> the other thing was uh, with, okay, so with engaging partners, um, trying to identify technologies that we can promote that don't directly uh, conf conflict with existing incumbents at our partner institutions. Um, so like all of the Microsoft software, for example, work out things that are maybe an augmentation to what the uh, institutions currently have and um, maybe will receive less um, hostility from, from the existing uh, people in the organizations as, as being seen as a threat. So something that, that is, a, a, I think, as Alan put it, um, a Trojan horse that would help uh, get these things in the door without attracting too much immediate, um, raising the hackles too immediately. Um, Another thing that Rajiv suggests, which I think is a great idea, is to actually come up with some one-on-one -on -one or some, some small-scale webinars that would uh, be available for people in the IT departments at the partners to actually implement, go through the actual process with a video webinar of implementing some of our solutions so that they can follow along with it. And at the end of it, they've got an actual working system that is one of our components, one of our open source components. And that could be the basis for forming a, a community of people who can then discuss these things and problems they've had improving the, the webinars. And then eventually those could, those could eventually actually become uh, micro courses that could be used for professional development at, the, at our partner institutions and um, you know, would have an actual assessment. You know, does, does your website work? <laughs> that sort of thing would, would, you know, you could have a, a fairly, um, useful uh, and perhaps desirable thing for, for IT staff to do so that they actually get engaged with the process as an opportunity to learn. Um, so the key things we have, uh, and, and also the idea of a, a, a peer support network where people who undertake those kinds of courses can then help each other through the, the communication mechanisms that we already have, like our forums and the chat and so on, so that they can support other learners and that would also build a sense of community within the IT side of our partner organizations. Um, so the short-term priority we identified was to pick certain technologies that fit that sort of unicorn profile of being something that will be of interest to institutions but not something that conflicts with what they've already got, and then create a trial uh, webinar um, to try implementing that and see whether there's uptake. We can only give it a try. And yeah, I think, Eventually, this could, this could lead to an actual open source boot camp that might occur as part of these meetings on an annual basis um, where technologists might come along from partner organizations and actually participate in a, in a one-day face-to-face get-together where they actually learn some new technology that they've all decided ahead of time is of interest. Uh, so how about we have the digital marketing group now? 
Um, so I suppose if we start uh, with digital marketing, I suppose it's one of those things where we don't know what we don't know. Um, so when you're trying to answer the questions about digital marketing, it, unless you're a guy that spends eight hours a day doing it, it's kind of hard to know the full story. Um, but in terms of the challenges that we were looking at for professional staff, I suppose, inside the, our institutions is they're largely worried about, you know, if they advertise on OERU, are they cannibalizing their own internal marketing? Um, and what does that sort of competition look like? Um, if you do advertise on OERU, are you keeping a consistent message with what your institution is trying to, I suppose, communicate to the rest of the world? Um, and then the third point there is uh, our, our marketing professionals maybe don't understand the messaging of what OERU is. So, you know, it it's becomes another responsibility for us to be able to educate them and get them to buy into what the mission is when they're obviously being targeted against their own internal messaging. Um, uh, I think in the, the other, one of the other issues that we mentioned was, you know, are, are we as the institutions focused on enrollments into our courses um, or are we just looking for, you know, soft leads that are people that are just interested in the platform? Um, and is that have gone in through the OERU system, you know, have actually funneled into our institutional courses. Um, that's a continual question that we've come up against within our, within UTAS. Um, in terms of what opportunities, or oh, what are the opportunities? Um, like Wayne mentioned, maybe some corporate sponsorship of courses, or like Chris mentioned, some maybe revenue share agreements could be had. Could be looked at. Um, I suppose another opportunity is for different marketing professionals from different institutions to learn from each other. Um, so there's a bit of cross institutional professional development there. Um, whether or not they buy that, who knows. Um, and I suppose the data of the audience and the potential students is of like value to all the partners within the network. Because the more students that we have funneling in, the more data we can see, which might, you know, provide us with some learnings into the future. Um, and then I suppose, how do we get the OEU group um, to participate more? I think it's just, you know, educating ourselves on what we don't know or who do we have to draw on. Because um, obviously marketing isn't our day job. So to be able to engage in that space, we either need to upskill ourselves or draw people in that know what they're talking about. And then some strategies that we had, um, you can sort of see them there. Uh, Chris mentioned, you know, we could use blogs just from our own uh, you know, partners that are here. We could just start writing stories about what OERU is to our institutions, which will help our search engine optimization. Um, cause that's, will be one of the major issues when it comes to OERU actually promoting themselves is how does anyone find us? We don't necessarily know what someone that's looking to learn online searches for. Um, and if they do search for something, there's already existing messaging from Coursera or FutureLearn that they're more likely to be drawn to because they just don't know OERU exists. So how do you start generating awareness? Well, the cheap strategy is just to start writing some content which should hopefully show up. Um, and then I suppose the other thing is, uh, uh, Chris mentioned we could, was it high state or high stake? Stakes, okay, sorry, that was my bad. Yeah, so yeah, different ins institutions around the world that would provide us with funding um, to develop in certain developing nations. Um, so to speak, but that was what we had there. Um, so we could go to the group that was looking at uh, engagement of more partners, I think it was. Thank you, Leslie. 
So we started by um, with a discussion actually about what is engagement. We realised that there's a whole spectrum from people who are just institutions that are just paying the fees right through to people who are contributing um, resources and courses and, and um, micro-credentials that can form part of the whole offering. Um, so at the top I've just got my summary of all the bullet points. Um, and we found that the barriers to engagement uh, in summary are attitudes. People think, as was mentioned earlier today, that if it's free it's not worth anything or if we didn't do it in-house, then it's not valuable. Um, uh, lack of money, uh, and that includes money to pay staff to invest in building um, OERU resources. Um, uh, workload, so people are too busy um, or can't see the value for them. And not catching the vision, so, so not having a good understanding of what OERU is about. Um, and so then if we scroll down to the second one, what are the opportunities? Um, I've summarised that as articulate and embed the vision and the, or the return on investment. So it's actually identifying what the benefits are and we summarise those as being um, the, the altruistic one of, of achieving social good uh, internationally, um, but also uh, for learners that don't or can't afford or for some reason can't access um, sort of traditional learning pathways. Um, so the social good, um, financial um, benefit, the, in terms of the examples Dave Lane was talking about, about downloading some of those open access resources, using them in-house, um, about, I'm trying to remember what the other two were, um, were workload issues. So actually we can help alleviate the workload of our academic staff by saying, here are some courses you can implement into your courses uh, as well. Um, and the fourth one was, what was the fourth one? Building reputation. Um, you know, we are part of this bigger thing. Um, so those, th those were the opportunities we saw was really to then sell that vision to de further down from top management buy-in, further down through senior management, through academics. So then we can skip the recommendations because they just led on to some quite concrete proposals. So we started talking about this group of proposals in the middle and then we realised that actually we needed somebody to do them. So we, our first recommendation is um, we need a new working group that is focused on public engagement. And Phil's put up his hand to lead that. Thank you, Phil. Um, and we had some other volunteers from institutions represented around the table, which is good, although they may nominate somebody else. So they can persuade somebody when they get home. But Phil is also going to invite the CEOs to, to opt in if there are CEOs for whom that is also an important issue for their institutions. So then the, um, the work plan, if you like, for that working group uh, is firstly to find out from existing OERU partners what you know, are there examples of best practice? Where are the successes at integrating OERU within institutions um, that we can uh, tell each other about and um, celebrate that? Um, but also what are the barriers within different institutions? Because maybe we're too small a group and we didn't identify all of them, or maybe those are only relevant for our institutions and not for others. Um, and then use that information to develop an explicit ROI. So we think it will incorporate those four things that I talked about. Um, but actually unpacking what those benefits are to help um, then go on to the next one, which is providing partner institutions with the resources that they can use to sell OERU within their organisation. Um, and the recommendation, the idea of doing that was a staff orientation module, that when new staff come on board, we should be promoting this as what we expect them to be doing as they develop new courses. Um, so that's you know, like in our institution, sustainability already has that um, status, if you like. It's expected to be in every course, but we should also be expecting open education, the use of and con contribution to, to be part of business as usual within the institution. Um, and then developing guidelines for partner institutions. So beyond the, the orientation module, looking at sort of best practice ways, um, how do we show that we measure it, we value it, we reward it, you know, so, and that may be individual different reward systems within different institutions. But again, there'll be examples we can learn from each other. Um, and then the last two bullets are taking a slightly different look at engagement, uh, not just within our organisations, but actually with, with other institutions. How do we encourage other institutions to engage more with OERU, um, whether at partner level or possibly even um, before that? Um, 
so we're looking at what are their obstacles to becoming partners because maybe the ROI for us as existing partners is not the same as the ROI for the institutions that have not joined. Um, and we need to actually have a look at that. Um, and um, are there ways we can engage with them? So for example, if cost is an issue for them joining, are there still ways that we can engage with them at a different level um, that may be beneficial to achieving the goals of OERU? mutually beneficial. Um, and the last one was, um, is there scope to consider an alternative to a cash payment of membership? So at the moment, there is a dollar value attached to membership, but actually, um, are there other ways we could look at that as well? Thank you, Leslie. And lastly, Adrian. Do you want to report on our work in progress? Yes, very much so. Thank you. So first of all, I just want to um, say thank you to everyone who was generous to come and, and discuss this. There's, uh, there's some fantastic experience in the room for starters. Uh, we started to discuss really what is it that, uh, that we want to achieve by building one of these tools? What's it meant to actually do? And so we were, we were thinking that um, does, does it um, need to address the, the existing courses so that they can be reviewed, assessed, whatever word that you would prefer in there, um, but also acting as a blueprint for uh, courses that are going to be developed. So uh, a more holistic tool was something that, that came up a number of times. Um, in addition to that, we considered a range of things that, that could go into this. So things like uh, what types of engagement, feedback and interaction are present and are possible within the environment. Um, um, uh, levels of open, are the resources, is the pedagogy open enough, those sorts of things. And we saw both engagement and uh, the levels of open as being on a continuum. So it, it's sort of, you know, how open, um, how engaged. Also considering things like um, what are the actual touch points uh, for engagement in the course. Um, and uh, whilst it's important to consider the implications for institutions wanting to adopt or adapt an OERU course, we also need to consider um, the courses as standalone sitting within the context of, of, um, of the OERU. Furthermore, there was a uh, uh, discussion around the contextual relevance of the course and uh, one, of, one of our colleagues said that that should be a scale as well, the global to local scale. Uh, the idea being how, how usable is this outside of its immediate context or are there contextual limitations on the course? Uh, to what extent are students supported in their activities throughout and uh, when when we were talking about how uh, you might actually use a tool like this, we were talking about there, there being an overall um, blueprint, but there would be components that would speak to different people. So for example, you might have uh, the academic staff member, if you're considering you know, maybe credit transfer or bringing the course into your institution, who looks through the topics and says, uh, given the learning outcomes here, are those topics the, the kinds of things that you would need to cover in order to get those outcomes? A learning designer might be looking at the assessment. You know, is the type of assessment, is the, uh, is the, uh, the style of assessment, are, are these appropriate mechanisms for meeting the learning outcomes of the course? Uh, also, what we thought, uh, and lastly, was that if uh, staff can transparently see this framework, they could engage in it as a form of self-reflection. So essentially, they've worked with with the team, they've put the course together, and then they have the opportunity to be the first people to engage with this, go through and say, okay, I actually feel comfortable about my work now, and this could go a very long way toward making people more comfortable about sharing their practice. So if we're transparent about how it's going to be reviewed, assessed, whatever the word ends up being, and we show people that up front, if they feel confident that they've met those, through their self-reflection, then they may actually be more likely to share their work broadly. So thank you um, to everyone who came along. It was a very fruitful discussion and, and it really helped to catalyze uh, where I think this needs to go.